Imagine a futuristic world where robots and humans live together. But imagine these robots became more human-like the more time progressed. In fact, they became so human-like that they learned to manifest the same emotions as us. Hatred. Love. Sadness. Yo, how's it going everybody? It's the Masked Man. And today we're going to be talking about Naraki Urasawa's third masterpiece. Pluto. But before we get into that, if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, that way you never miss an upload on your favorite anime, manga, or whatever content. And without further ado, cue the intro. So the previous works that I have covered by Naraki Urasawa have been Monster and 20th Century Boys. Monster ranking at my number 4 and at the time 20th Century Boys ranked at my number 5. And honestly, I thought that was it. I thought maybe any other work of his that I read, whether that be Pluto or Billy Bat, might be top 20, but impossible that they're top 10. Now I haven't read Billy Bat yet, so that's what I will be reading next, and then I'll plan on reading Dora Hidoro. But the mad lad did it! He got three of his works into my top 10. Monster ranking at my number 4. Pluto now ranking at my number 5, and 20th Century Boys ranking at number 6. I think all three stories are around the same tier and quality um, in terms of its story, its narrative, the themes tackled, the character. As an overall story, I think the three are in a similar area, um, but I think Monster is definitely the best. But I liked Pluto more than 20th Century Boys, and I think it was better done than 20th Century Boys. Any of the flaws that you can point out, for instance, the ending of 20th Century Boys wasn't the cleanest, even though there was the 16 chapter extension 21st Century Boys that kind of cleared up. And also there were moments within 20th Century Boys where I felt like it was extremely dragged out, uh, even though I like the new characters that were introduced. Pluto is only 65 chapters. It is way shorter than 20th Century Boys and Monster. But it is great from start to finish. The classical Urasawa plot twists, it has it all. I'm serious, if you liked Monster and you liked 20th Century Boys, this should be the next manga that you read. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this takes place in a futuristic setting with new countries, new laws, new jurisdictions and whatnot. And well, robots now live amongst humans. It's basically an extension of Astro Boy. Now, I actually haven't read the original Astro Boy manga. The only Astro Boy experience I had was with the movie that came out, I think a decade ago already. But from what I do know, this does have some connection with Astro Boy. Now, at face value, when I hear robots and futuristic in this sci-fi setting, I really wonder what kind of themes it can necessarily tackle that will be relatable, or at least themes that the audience can connect with. But the theme and the value of human life and the way that that's communicated is beautiful in this manga. Similar to how Parasite does it in its manga through Shinji and his relationship with his Parasite. Here in this manga, they truly show what it means to be human. And at times they show that through manifestations of the robots. When the robots manifest emotion, it kind of shows how their sense or their identification of emotion is many times misunderstood by humans, even though some of the robots are programmed to be as human as possible. And it kind of shows the complexity of what humanity is. And what I truly appreciate about this manga is that that is the theme that it presents to you when it talks about humanity and the distinction between humanity and robots and some of the robots that are very human-like. This theme isn't just thrown out there, resolved, and then a new theme gets tackled and they just leave that previous theme to be handled with mediocre through the rest. No, this theme is central from beginning to end. And I think that's one of the benefits of it only being 65 chapters long as it doesn't feel dragged out at all. They don't waste a single breath in this manga. Everything is for the progression of the story, the progression of the plot, and the progression of all of the characters. And I appreciate that a lot. I don't think there's going to be any other manga that I can read that's under 100 chapters that will give me more bang for my buck than Pluto. It honestly is just brilliant. I think it's Urasawa's peak writing abilities all condensed into a short 65 chapters. Now the thing that kind of held Pluto back from being below Monster is I think Pluto does a lot of the things Monster does more condensed but I think Monster does it overall in a much better fashion and for a longer period of time. Also Johan as a character is just nothing in Pluto will top Johan and that might be one of the things that might seem a little bit lacking in Pluto compared to 20th Century Boys and Monster considering that 20th century had friend and monster had johan and those are two top tier antagonists pluto doesn't necessarily have that within its manga the final antagonist of the series he's good 
Uh, he's really good, but I, I don't think he's he's up there at all with, I would say, Friend or Johan. Now, I don't want to be misunderstood because I felt misunderstood in my last video where I kind of talked about it lacking a major antagonist. My issue was, was in the previous story I talked about Fire Punch, is there was still conflict that was being pushed, and I get the true enemy was within himself, but that still didn't fit well considering that there were still some other narratives outside of himself as a character that was pushing for conflict. So, you know, if like there were antagonists outside of himself that just didn't push the conflict well. When it comes to Pluto, the antagonist does a phenomenal job of pushing the plot. However, this antagonist doesn't necessarily have as much personality as I would say Johan did. I mean, even Friend felt more like an entity than he did a personality like Johan but that's besides the point. Now, the main protagonist of the story is also extremely intriguing. He's a detective. He's kind of like Robocop, but without the funky suit. And again, all of the themes that are presented throughout the manga centrally is manifested through him brilliantly. If you're going to have themes that you want to manifest through your protagonist, don't just throw them out there for a moment or just kind of loosely have them about and then just don't like explore them. No, explore them. Have that be part of the mystery in unveiling maybe some of the reasons why that character fits specific themes. And I think that's truly the biggest strength of Pluto, just as it is with most Urasawa works. But with this one is you it, the it's just so unpredictable honestly there's some moments you can predict here and there but for the most part when i was reading this it had me on the edge of my seat from beginning to end and i mean beginning to end and i think that will be really good and refreshing for some of the people that i know have read monster and read 20th century and it came off as a little boring at first for me 20th century came off boring when i first picked it up and then i ended up dropping it Thank goodness I ended up picking it up again, but everything about Pluto for me is brilliant, brilliant. It truly sets you in this futuristic world that you feel like you're in, and it gives it a realistic tone nonetheless. It presents real issues based off of the advancement of technology and the big what if as to what if we do reach that era of robots to where robots might replace humanity. Can they truly replace humanity? And the overall danger of a robot being just like a human. Because imagine a guy who can pick up an entire building. That person can be extremely helpful, but he's also equally capable of being as destructive. Any of the twists and turns that happen within the story are all there for the plot and for the benefit of the story and the plot. It doesn't detract from the plot or any of the character progression and development to add some crappy shock value. And I appreciate that greatly with this story. All of the side characters as well that were presented with all have a purpose within the story. All of them contribute something to the story. And again, it, when I said this earlier, I mean it. Pluto does not waste any time from beginning to end. Overall, for me, this is a classic and absolute masterpiece. Urasawa nailed it once again for me. And I don't think there's any debate that he is the greatest mangaka of all time. I mean, I need to read some of the other works by Inoue. I'm reading Slam Dunk currently. I read Vagabond. I need to read Real. And so for me, it would be in between those two. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, what about Kentaro Miura? And I look, he created the best manga of all time for me, Berserk. So, I mean, that would definitely get him within my top five. But when it comes to mangakas... Urasawa bro just he's the goat all I need to do now is read Billy Bat and see if that's another story that lands my top 20 or top 10 but honestly I I know it might sound like I'm gassing it up a lot but I'm just incredibly impressed and just in love with the fact that he was able to condense this brilliance within 65 chapters and not waste any page and look man if there's anybody who might be a little salty from the fire punch video i had pretty high expectations for this as well i mean it was written by the same guy who did monster and 20th century boys i was like okay this better be real good and it was really good so yes once again pluto gets a big thumbs up from me if you enjoyed this video make sure you like comment subscribe turn on the bell notifications and as always this has been the masked man hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day and peace